Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here with 3.09 Colligative Properties. As always, be sure to take notes. Colligative Properties. Colligative Properties means some properties of a solution are different from the properties of the pure solvent that is used to make up the solution. Alright, what this is saying is that if you have salt water, is it the same as pure water? No, of course not. Okay, so salt water is not the same as pure water. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, I've known that since I've been about two. You're right, you have. So keep that in mind when you're doing this lesson. That's the main point of this. It's not so much the fact that they are different because you've known that since you've been two, but it's the how and the why behind salt water because it's a solution is different than if you just have pure water. So if I have salt water, which one is the salute and which one is the solvent? The solvent is the water. And so our salute would be the salt and the solution would be salt water as a whole. So we're going to look at how and why salt water's properties are different than when we just had pure water. The addition of a solute to a solvent will create a mixture with different properties called colligative properties. All right, so colligative properties depend on the moles of substance, or specifically the moles of the solute that we're going to use compared to the moles of solvent, so if it's dilute or if it's concentrated. And some colligative properties specifically include, or some things that are going to be different about a solution versus the pure solvent, include the boiling point, the freezing point, and the vapor pressure. Now if we look at this word, boiling point elevation, what does elevate mean? Go up or down? Elevate means goes up. So when we have solutions, it's going to cause the boiling point to go up and be higher than the pure solvent. Freezing point depression, what does depress mean? Well, it means down, lower, right? So freezing point depression means the solution's freezing point is going to be what? Higher or lower than the original solvent's freezing point. We're causing a freezing point depression. We're causing a freezing point lowering. So the freezing point of the solution will be lower than the original freezing point of the solvent. And then we'll get to vapor pressure in a little bit. Colligative property. A property of a solution that is the result of the amount of solute in the solution, not the type of solute. And examples of colligative properties include a higher boiling point, a lower melting point, and a reduced vapor pressure. So we don't care what the solute is. We don't care if it's salt or sugar or anything. We don't care. All that we care about is how much we have, how many moles of the solute we have. Some physical properties of a liquid solution are different from those of the solvent. Why does fresh water freeze before salt water? What keeps antifreeze in your car from freezing? And why does adding it to a car engine keep the engine from overheating? The answers can be found by examining the colligative properties of solutions. So properties that change when you have a solution versus when you had the original solvent. The colligative properties of a solution are those linked to the amount of solute that is in a particular solvent. So it's how much we have. The water in pine needles does not freeze in the winter. So that's how they're able to stay alive and green is because they don't freeze because of colligative properties. Freezing point depression. Again, what does depress mean? Go down. So freezing point depression, the lowering of a solvent's freezing temperature based on the amount of solute it contains. For example, fresh water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I know, I know, we don't use Fahrenheit in science class, but I put this one in Fahrenheit because I wanted it to make more sense to you when we show that there's about a four degree difference between fresh water and seawater or ocean water. So ocean water has to get to 28 degrees Fahrenheit before it freezes. Fresh water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. A salt crystal on pavement helps melt the surrounding snow because it lowers the freezing point. And it doesn't lower it this much. Um, I think overall it's just like 
about two degrees that it lowers it, but it still obviously makes a difference. Freezing point depression. When liquid water freezes, its molecules form an orderly pattern of a solid. Okay, so we have gaseous water molecules, liquid water molecules, and solid. You can see we have this nice pattern, which is part of why snowflakes have that nice pattern. So when liquid water freezes, its molecules become an orderly pattern of a solid. If a solute like rock salt is added to liquid water, the formation of the regular pattern of the solid is disrupted by the presence of sodium and chloride ions. Okay, so in other words, here is just water, it's going in order, it's all nice and pretty. Here, the salt is in the way. Okay, it's making it kind of a mess. It's making it take a different amount of energy in order to form that beautiful pattern and to freeze. More kinetic energy must be removed from the solution to make it freeze. The result is that the freezing point of this water and salt mixture is lower than the freezing point of pure water. So friends keep you from freezing. They lower your freezing point. And so they're saying like this is a water molecule and you can think of the salt in a way insulating, although it's not really insulating at all, it's just kind of getting in the way, but it's lowering the freezing point. Now, if you notice in this caption, it says non-volatile solutes. So only non-volatile solutes, vapor pressure lowering and all this stuff, the freezing point depression and the boiling point elevation will occur only if the solute that is added to the pure solvent is non-volatile. Non-volatile means it does not easily vaporize. A substance such as gasoline does vaporize, right? If you spill some gasoline, it evaporates right away and therefore will have less of an effect on the vapor pressure of the solvent. Compounds such as sodium chloride, salt, and calcium chloride do not vaporize readily, right? You can have si salt sitting on your counter all day. It's not going to evaporate. So that's going to have a bigger impact on all these colligative properties. The addition of either of these two some in a solvent will lower the vapor pressure. Remember, real life is in 3D. So I showed you how they're in a pattern, but the pattern looks more like this, like a snowflake, but you gotta remember it's a three-dimensional pattern. So sometimes I think in chemistry we just kind of forget when we only see pictures like this that, oh yeah, it's happening three-dimensionally, it's lining up. All right, freezing point depression. The result when we have salt water is that the freezing point of this water and salt mixture is lower than the freezing point of pure water. So melting or freezing point of solvent, remember the melting point and the freezing point is the same thing. So water melts at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now we're in chemistry class. Water freezes at what temperature in degrees Celsius? Zero. Water melts at what temperature in degrees Celsius? zero. But when we add a solute and make a solution, that lowers, lowers the melting and the freezing point. This is a property of the solution, a colligative property called freezing point depression or freezing point lowering. Freezing point depression is the difference in temperature between the freezing point of solution and the freezing point of the pure solvent. So in other words, how much did we drop the freezing point? Ice cream makers take advantage of this colligative property by filling part of the container with a salt and ice mixture. So if you've ever made ice cream at home, you have to use salt to get it cold enough to actually make the ice cream. The temperature of the container then can go below the freezing point of water, and when it does, the cream will solidify into ice cream. All right, so now we're going to talk about boiling point elevation. Boiling point elevation or boiling point going up is another example of a colligative property. So boiling point elevation is the raising of a solvent's boiling temperature based on the amount of the solute it contains. So again, we had our original boiling point and now we're gonna increase it. Boiling point elevation is another example of a colligative property. You may have seen a car pulled over on the side of a road, its hood wide open with steam billowing from the engine. That car was overheating. Chances are the driver did not have enough coolant in the car's cooling system. Coolant is a solute. 
When coolant is added to the water in the car's cooling system, it raises the boiling point of water, meaning water can get over 100 degrees Celsius and still not boil. And this makes it less likely to boil over. This raise in the boiling point is a colligative property called boiling point elevation. Antifreeze does the opposite. It may in fact be the exact same chemical or set of chemicals as coolant. Okay, let's stop. Here's why. So if we say this was water's original freezing point, it's the amount of solute. Remember, it's the amount that matters, not the type. So when I add antifreeze, okay, it means that it will freeze at a lower temperature, but it also changes the boiling point and it boils at a higher temperature because it has to do with the amount of solute. So, but it is a solute nevertheless and thus can act to raise the boiling point or lower the freezing point or really both. As the atmosphere reaches the freezing point of the solvent, the pressure of the solute depresses the freezing point or lowers it in the cooling system, making it less likely to freeze in winter temperatures. Ethylene glycol, the active chemical in antifreeze, keeps the water in antifreeze from freezing and makes it a more effective coolant. So it lowers the what? Which point does it lower? It lowers the freezing point because you want it to be able to handle cold Minnesota winters. And what does it do to the boiling point? It raises it because you have to handle hot Minnesota summers. So look at the picture. It's the same thing. Friends also keep you cool. And this picture is showing that they're blocking the sun. And here it was showing that they're blocking the cold. Well, blocking is a good way to think of it because, again, they're getting in the way. So, system A. In system A, the liquid particles easily shift into the gas phase at normal boiling pressure. There are no obstacles for the liquid particles as there is over here. So, the molecules are bouncing around and if there's nothing in their way, they can become free and become gas. But look at this one. It hit that sodium chloride or that sugar or whatever molecule and it had, and it's like when you play pool or billiards, right? If you hit a corner, it bounces back. This one, er, bounces back. This one, er, bounces back. They're getting in the way. This one, woohoo, we'll get free, okay? So in system B, the solute particles prevent the liquid particles from escaping the system to turn into gas. This requires the liquids to possess more energy, therefore higher temperature to boil and become a gas. Vapor pressure. Let's see what it is first. Vapor pressure is the force exerted by a gas that lies above the solution in a sealed system. All right, so we have a glass here with some water in it and it has a cover. The pressure of this gas is called vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is determined by the evaporation rate or how fast something evaporates of a solution in a sealed system. Vapor pressure is the force exerted by a gas that lies above the solution in a sealed system. In a pure liquid, there is a point when molecules on the surface of the liquid evaporate. At the same time, molecules that are in the gaseous phase will condense up on top, or right here, back into liquid. When the rates of these two processes are equal, so five molecules every minute are becoming gas, and five gaseous molecules every minute are becoming liquid. Okay, when it's equal, go in both directions, the system is in equilibrium. The pressure on the surface of the solvent at that equilibrium point is called vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is caused by molecules pushing down on the surface of the liquid. Oops, sorry. The addition of a solute to a solution decreases the surface area exposed to air for evaporation. Okay, so here, all these water molecules can evaporate. There's nothing in the way. Here, look at the green. It's getting in the way. So this molecule will go up and er, bounce off. This one, er, bounce off. This one, woohoo, I can be free. When a solute is added to a pure liquid, the vapor pressure drops. What happens is that the molecules of dissolved solute take up some of the space at the top of the liquid. This prevents some of the solvent molecules from evaporating. But the rate of molecules condensing does not change. Okay, these are still going to turn into liquid at the same rate. So now maybe it's only going to be two molecules a minute are going to turn to gas, but five molecules a minute are still going to turn back into liquid. There is an imbalance. 
with more molecules at the interface in the liquid phase than the gaseous phase. More molecules of gas leave the air than enter it, 